Let's talk a little bit more about those server actions in Next.js. There are basically three real advantages of these server actions. So in a previous video, we looked at a to-dos application and I completely walked you through from A to Z on how to set up these server actions, including the use form status and the use optimistic hooks. So you really get a cutting edge UI that way. But in this video, let's quickly talk about what, what are the real benefits. Let's compare the old way of doing it with the new way. So imagine we have just a simple to-dos page again. We have just a list here and I can add something here, right? So I could say something like do the dishes. If I now click on add here, it's going to add this to the database and eventually it also puts it here in the list. All right, so how would we do this with the old way? So now let's take a look at the actual code here. So let's talk about how you would do this the old way. So you have a form and in the form we have that input and then a simple button. I removed the styling here, right? So just to keep it uh, basic. So you would have a form and then you would listen for the on submit or maybe on click on the button. Right, so on, here we're doing it with on submit. So then when the form gets submitted, we would have some event handler, let's say handle submit, and you could define that up here. And then in here, you would basically make a fetch call to one of your API endpoints. Right, so here we would make fetch, or maybe you're using Axios, it's the same story, axios.post, or right. So you had to create this API endpoint on your server, and then you would have to do all this stuff, right? Method post, because we want to add something to this resource. So it's going to be post request. We have a body with json.string right make sure that this object here that we're sending is in json format and then the actual content property it's going to be the input text right so if it's a controlled uh, component you would have use state here you need to use use state and then you will use that as the value and then when it gets changed you would use the on change event handler here to update that value right controlled component if it's not controlled you would use use ref right so make sure you have mastered the underlying fundamentals both react as well as next.js i have a course on that very soon coming out highly recommend you get on the email list till you've been notified and then you would also have headers here that's necessary for a post request as well and so this has how you would do it traditionally so how does the new way look like so the new way this i don't even have to scroll it's all in view here it's still a form and we still have an input and we still have a button but now we have this action attributes this is something that you may have seen in plain html before you could use like an url and then the browser would submit the form data to the url but in next.js these days you don't you don't really pass a url you pass just a plain javascript function and that's that's the actual server action here, right? So I'm importing it here. We'll, we'll look, take a look at that in a second. This is all the front end, right? Just looking at the front end here, right? So you can see it's much cleaner and we don't have to have some ugly fetch call or axios. We don't have to keep track of state or use ref. We don't have to use those uh, hooks. And let me actually split the screen here. So here I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can properly compare it. So on the left side, we have the old way. On the right side, we have the new way, right? So here you can see we have basically removed this entire handle submit we don't need that anymore right we only need to pass a function a server function server action to this action attribute Right, so this is how the front end looks like. Now let's take a look at the back end. So traditionally, you would have to submit this to the API endpoint. So you would have to create an API endpoint. Right, so in Node.js, you would use something like Express to deal with that. And maybe you, you were already using Next.js, so then you could have like an API route. Right, so like this. You can still do this, by the way. There are some exceptions. But right, so then you would have your, your route. And here in Next.js, you would have to do it like this. So we're exporting a post function here. And we can grab the request. You would grab the content from there. You had to parse that as JSON. And then I'm using Prisma here to create that actual to-do item in my database. And then you can return some next response to the client again, right? And to make sure that you are actually sending it to the correct URL, you have to be careful with the uh, the structure here of your of your folders and files, right? So it's all about the structure of folders and files. So here it's the to-do's to directory in the API directory. So you get slash API slash to-do's, right? So that's where, that's where I would need to export my route here right so this is all basically the traditional way right without server actions all right so now with server actions right so now we have this function and let's take a look at that function so it's i uh, usually you're going to have an actions uh, so here i have my function so here it's a, it's called add to do it's called add to do here and let me make that a little bit wider so at the top, I have use server so that this function will only run on the server and mark it as a server action. So as you can see, it's just a, it's just a JavaScript function, right? It's asynchronous. Uh, it takes in form data. So here, if you pass the function as for the action attribute, Next.js will make sure that you get access to that form data automatically, right? So here we had to use use state and then you can use, you can keep track of the actual text, the input text like this. You have to pass it manually like this and then you can get access to it 
it on the server here, right? So now we don't need to do that. We automatically get access to that here in form data, right? So that's a uh, form data dot get to get the actual content. Then we can actually add it to a database and then we can just return a normal JavaScript object, right? So not with this strange next response that JSON, we can just return a normal JavaScript object and we can do something with that on the client if we want. It's automatically stringified to JSON. So all of that is handled for us under the hood by Next.js, right? And now we also don't need to pay attention to like the structure of our folder here and files. It's just a normal JavaScript function that we can just, uh, we can just, we just have to put use server at the top and export it and then just import it like any other, you know, utility function or perhaps other function that you, you would use like that. And so here, this whole API route stuff, this whole fetching stuff has all been abstracted away from you, right? So now your API route has basically just become a normal JavaScript function. Put your business logic in your function and just invoke that function here by adding it to the action attribute. That's the first major advantage. You don't have to create these API routes and actually submit something manually like this. That's all handled for you behind the scenes. And just to prove that to you, I can inspect here and I, we can look at the network tab to show you that there is actually still a fetch request here. So here I can add something, let's say, uh, I will just say test. If I click add here, you can see there is actually a fetch request here and eventually it gets added here. If I click on that fetch request, you can see there is actually a fetch request being made, but this is using server actions and we are not using, you know, we're not writing fetch or axios, but we still have a fetch request and we can see at the payload of that fetch request, there is indeed test here, you know, as part of that data. And there are, there's also some action identifier, some other identifier. And this is just Next.js. Right? Next.js is making that fetch call for us behind the scenes. It still exists, but uh, we don't have to deal with this fetch or axios ourselves. Right? So we can focus now more on the actual business logic instead of wiring up, you know, our API route with some fetch call, we get a better focus on the business logic. All right, so second big benefit that we get from server actions is that it makes these, is that it will make loading state, for example, very easy. So traditionally, if you want to show like a loading state, typically you would create like a, another state variable, you know, something like um, is submitting, is submitting. And then before you make the actual fetch call, you set it to true. And then after you can set it to false again, right? Lots of boilerplate to keep writing this, this uh, pattern. Right? And then here, when it's submitting, you know, you can add some logic here to the button. If it's submitting, we could say something like adding and otherwise it will just be add. Right? So to give the user a f some feedback that there's actually something happening. So how would you do that with the new server actions here? So we get, a, we actually get a hook here. It's called use form status and it's currently still experimental. So if you import it, it will look like this and you can alias this. So you can say S just use form status. So then you can just use this name. This will give you, I will just show it here. This will give you a pending uh, value here. So when you, you can use this hook and it will give you a pending value. And right, so then here in the button, you can do something like pending, then we want to add. All right, so now we get the, the same result without having to create the, the state variable and doing this true and then false. All right, this is much cleaner. Now, one caveat to this though is right now, this won't work because you do need to make the button its own child component of this component. And then you have to use this in that button component, All right? So we would have to refactor this into its own button component and then use the hook in there. This is just an example. The form with the server action needs to be an ancestor of where you're using this hook. So here we need, we need we need to make this basically its own component right? and then we have to use it in there and check out my other video if you want to have an actual walkthrough of how to implement this hook as well because i'll show you how to do it there uh, another really cool hook that we get is the use optimistic hook it's also experimental but this also works really nicely with server actions so as use optimistic and this means when you add something to the page so test five let's say if i click here now now it's going to take some time right so i'm waiting like two seconds and then it pops up but we know it's going to succeed most of the time so we might as well just immediately show it here on the page we don't even need a loading indicator if we do that, right? So we can be optimistic about the result and just immediately put it here. And then if the, you know, mutation on the server, the, there's something going wrong on the server and it didn't actually, and it wasn't able to add it to the database, then we want to refer to that. This hook makes it very easy. Again, if you want to see it, go, go look at my complete walkthrough of a server action where we also use this to immediately update the UI. That's going to be the future of UIs. It's going to be very snappy like that. So it's really cool to see that. And this works in conjunction with server actions, right? 
right? So again, how would you do that traditionally? Well, that would be, you know, that would be a lot of calls. That would be a big mess. So this is really exciting. And this is the second major benefit. You get these very useful hooks out of the box that replace a lot of that boilerplate code. You will see people mention some other benefits as well, like progressive enhancement. And that means that this will work. So if I remove this here, this will work even if there's no JavaScript on the client. So if the JavaScript fails to load, um, this will still work. Or the user has the JavaScript turned off, it will still work. Yeah. Or basically there doesn't need to be any additional JavaScript shipped to the client. So the client side JavaScript bundle can be smaller. Right? So there is complete progressive enhancement if you do it like this. Now in the real world, we do want to have some client side logic here. So we do need to ship some additional JavaScript and we will lose some of that progressive enhancement because typically, you know, in the real world, we do want to do some client side things here. Right? So here this action, instead of immediately invoking the server action more realistically, and again, check out the other video if you want to see the whole example. More realistically, you're going to get the form data like this. You can just pass a function here. Before you invoke that server action, you can call it like this. And this is going to be async. Let's just add that here as well. Before you actually call the server action like this, typically we do want to have, for example, validate input data, you know, client side, and then also on the server side, of course, but also client side. Maybe we also want to reset the form, you know, reset the form. And then if this produces an error, we do want to be able to grab that error from what we get back and then you know if there is an error we want to have like a toast message hey something went wrong right so we have additional logic around this here so typically you don't just want to invoke the add to do what like what we had before there's going to be surrounding logic client side logic in the real world also that optimistic ui hook also you need to invoke that before you call the actual server action for example practically speaking you will need some client side javascript and you will lose some of that progressive enhancement but you do have some progressive enhancement so that's a third benefit you still get some progressive enhancements so this form will be prioritized with hydration for example and it will be interactive before other elements on the page right so there is still some progressive enhancement about this error by the way I'll, I'll make a separate video on that next so make sure you subscribe check out the other videos on my on server actions but yeah I think it's a really exciting feature uh, I really think it's going to be the future of web app development I uh, hope this was helpful check out my react next JS course will be released soon make sure you get on the email list I do want to say I see a lot of people jump into react make sure you have mastered the, the underlying fundamentals before you do that those are both javascript as well as css i have courses on them both check out the links in the description thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one bye